So it's lovely to meet you, Raoul. And what's really exciting is we're going to be talking about your book because yeah. you just brought your first book out yes. and it's written entirely by you. Every single word by <laughs> you. No editing at all. Well, a little bit of editing, little maybe bit, a little yeah. bit of help. So thanks, thanks for the invitation. It's, it's great to be here and to be sharing this, you know? I mean, like, um, the book has been a big project for me from A to Z. And uh, yeah, we love that we have a chat about it. We have a little bit of a tasting and we enjoy the shared common passion. I know, exactly, because um, I think we're both equally, equally obsessed with wine and food yeah. pairings. Because my background is all working in restaurants, mm. wine and food pairing. And your background is more sort of, you were very much focused on the wine education yes. side. Like you started with WSET, yes. teaching the WSET Correct. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I do it until today. I have, I have my own school, uh, which is called the Wine Training School. And I teach at the main WSET as well. For years I've been teaching in the main school. Yeah. So that gives me a really nice sort of uh, focus on, on the students. And, and this is one of the reasons why I wrote the book, based on the feedback of my students and my clients saying, look, we need something. We need something practical, a bit more simple but engaging. Yeah, because that's what I often find. Because I really enjoy doing my WSET. Mm. But there's, when you're learning about the food pairing, you hear sort of the theory behind mm. it and like yeah. the acidity should go with this. But yeah. then when you actually want to translate that, it makes it really, really difficult. Yeah. So um, I think I think uh, WSET courses are amazing. But I guess to have something that can go directly to the point yeah. and, and as, as you were saying, go concretely to something that can go like simple as, okay, I understand, let's say one recipe, I get it, I read it, it's fish, it's seafood, it's meat, and go through that and then go like, ooh, I have the wine on the side because that's the main structure of the book. Completely, because otherwise you sort of, you get a bit lost in there's so yeah. many complicated recipes out there and people say, oh, what goes with this, pork. But yeah. there's a thousand different ways of how to make pork and what yeah, to yeah. serve it with so it can be confusing. Yeah. But what I love about this is it's laid out so nicely because you've got, you can dip into the red wine, yeah. you have to go for red wine, but then you've got all these different recipes and each time you've got sort of that recipe yeah. with the wine that goes with it and you can learn about each thing within yeah. the two. So it's really sort yeah. of passive. So I think it's, the book obviously has a very, very strong focus on wine, but I'm not... I would say I'm not dictating what to do. So I'm saying, like for example, there's a Riesling, a great variety that many people love and many people hate because they, they never probably had a decent Riesling before. Yeah. Or someone to share, this, look, this is a dry version. It's beautiful, it's great. So you're gonna have a little bit of a background of the great variety, the styles, flavors, and the main appellations, the origins, when the best uh, wines come from. And a little bit of an indication in terms of the profile of the wine, also budget, which is important, yes. which which glass were to use, and then immediately, you know, you cross the the alley or the street, and the and the recipe comes straight. And I put a focus on simplicity. So the majority of the recipes, you don't need more than half an hour, wow. thirty minutes or below. Yeah. Only few exceptions. You will go forty-five minutes, but most of the time it's thirty minutes. And when you look at some of the recipes, sometimes there are like six ingredients, seven. Super, super simple. And everything from the supermarket, from your local shop, from yeah. your you know deli, whatever. I don't want to, because I'm not a trained chef, I always keep saying, I'm a trained sommelier, I'm a wine educator, that's fine, I'm a, I'm a wine guy. But in the kitchen, zero training. I know, I was going to say, how did you, how did you <laughs> decide to write a cookbook when you have zero training? Yeah, no, no, I have to be honest. So, Keep it very simple. My, my childhood, I was very lucky because I had two grandmothers, mm -hmm. very strong, very like South American style, like from Chile and like lots of cooking, lots of music. You know, we, we like tango, for example. I'm from Chile, but you know, we listen to a lot of tango and music and the kitchen is there. And, the, and you as a kid, it's like, come on, come on, help. And then you start smelling and you start looking at many things and you start copying. And, and when you are like 10, 12, you can start helping in the kitchen. But then when I moved to become a sommelier and then I was working in a mission star restaurant at the top level with top chefs, I was absorbing all the time. And also because I was discussing with them, oh, what's the pairing, what we should do? And I was learning, I was just looking at it. And obviously six years working uh, abroad, I work in a cruise ship. Yes, you so did. So I turned, I did over a hundred countries. Was it, it the entire world? Or yeah, 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 worldwide. Oh, wow. Okay. During six years. So ones. that was the, my, I would say the third pillar of that was extensive traveling. Yeah. Which means I was absorbing everything. I was like, okay. And then one day I thought, ooh, let's do this project. I can bring all that memories from childhood, all the training from the restaurant 
plus extensive traveling. And I thought, I can share that with any reader that maybe they're not in Istanbul, they're not in Mexico, they're not in North Africa, but they can be maybe for, for an hour with a bottle and a nice recipe. I really like that. So, but I also think there's such a crossover be between mm. wine and food. Like when you're growing up around yeah. food, that's basically like wine training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before you get to drink alcohol. Yeah. Because so much of it is coming from smelling the aromas and it's all about using your nose before you're actually using your palate and your taste buds and everything. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I dedicate, actually, the book is dedicated to my aunt, not to my grandmother, not, not to my mum. My mum's still happy. She said, it's, she fine. Okay it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's <laughs> fine. Um, no, she, she's been extremely, extremely fundamental for me because I learned from her that she said, look, you need to cook in a delicious way, but properly delicious, vibrant every time. So she is a cook that every time that she cooks, even a pasta, a rice, anything like simple or quite advanced, every time hits you. And you're like, wow, every single time, you know, <laughs> she's like a machine. I'm not like that, but I'm trying to go in her direction yeah. every single time. So I think uh, the book is, is about that, you know, and you see many of the recipes, they're simple. They're just chopping, tossing, boom, a bit in the oven, out. I mean, like lots of fresh stuff, lots of fish and, 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 and seafood, very little meat. Uh, almost half of the book is vegetarian, oh, really? but it was not intended to be like yeah. that. It's just the food that I eat at home. Actually, I cook most of this book at home which makes me very proud. I know, that's what I like about it being half an hour, because it's like the kind of food that you could actually have after work when you come home late. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's why I really like that you've written it. A cookbook not coming from a chef, because um, no. I, this story I used to have, but I used to work with a chef, and he was Michelin starred when he was mm. younger, and um, wrote a cookbook. And I had this cookbook, he gave me one, I asked for it. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, I was looking through all these things, being like, this is amazing, this is amazing. He went, you won't be able to make, to make any of that, yeah. even though I can half cook. Yeah, it's, yeah, like, yeah. it's just so complicated. That's There's so many recipes, yeah. so much machinery needed that yeah. coming from a trained Michelin star chef, you can actually yeah, make yeah. any of it. So it's it's nice like, it was like recipes. game over from the start because yeah. you see five different techniques. You yeah. see 25 ingredients. That's not going to happen. You don't have six hours to make one dish. But us, normal people, can go like, ooh, yeah, six, seven ingredients, great. Yeah. How many techniques? One. <laughs> chopping, chopping. I mean, we can't get it wrong, right? Tick, 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 tick. Boom, assembling, out. And I think it's a lot about, I think lots of people now at the moment, that because they're moving for, they're looking for more healthy options, mm -hmm. which means inquire less time in the kitchen. Yeah. Also, here, I'm very proud that no butter, no cream. Really? No, very to the minimum. Is it dairy free or is it just No, 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 no. it's not dairy free, okay. but to the minimum, because yeah. I don't eat butter myself. You know, and I don't drink milk myself. Yeah. So I'm trying to, you know, just sh sh this is essentially how I eat. And I think, you know, I like meat. Yeah. I love pork, but I eat fish probably five it's times like a, a week. Like you know, a daily thing. exactly. So it's like, yeah. Because I did notice that when I was reading through it all, all the recipes seem sort of healthy, mm. fresh things yeah. that you actually want to have all the yeah, time, yeah. every day, without. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My, I'm half French and all my family, all my grandma butter and cream, cream. Butter and it's cream. nice, and, and it's nice. I love it as well. Yeah, it's I love nice. It. But, but you can't eat it once every day. in a while, and you enjoy a lot. For example, the chocolate brownies, they're delicious. <laughs> Don't do that every day. I mean, yes, if you want to, if you want to go for the sort of super sweet diet. Yeah. But that's something that you do maybe once a week, once every two weeks on a weekend, and you celebrate that and you eat all that happy. You know, yeah. there's no point if you're oh no. It's too much calories and the butter is like eat healthy yeah and you can smash a brownie once in a while at home and you can afford to have a glass of wine exactly the side of it and, it's well. like, it's no it's and it's no problem and it's no problem i think uh yeah i was gonna say how did you choose the wines that are in here because i know that you like wines that are a little bit different a little mm. bit unusual sometimes yeah and you've got the classics in here but you've mm. also gone for some really sort of small yeah. like Vidello, which you yeah don't often see i think in. i think that, that there was a big challenge because when i sat down i remember i had the laptop Mm. And I had, uh, you know, some papers and, you know, some drawings that I was doing, you know, typical to get a bit more into the, the thing. I thought, okay, I need to be balanced. I need to showcase the classics. Yeah. And, yeah, the super, super classic and the second tier of classic as well. But then I want to give 
lots of really nice grapes that I like to drink myself, but also that can be relevant for someone that is like discovering a little bit more about wine, like you were saying, Verdello, for example, or a Giorgitico, or a Sirtico, or many other grapes. So it was very difficult. Yeah, and so, were you inspired more by Chilean wines? Uh, I think in Chile, because we have so many varieties mm. from Europe, which is uh, very different from, let's say, Argentina, which is more reduced, or other countries, we have many varieties, more than 20 international varieties in Chile. So in Chile, it was more like thinking about, okay, I remember that that dish was really good because we used to go to the beach all the time, and we used to eat that. For example, ceviche for us is this, it's like at any time. There's no occasion for ceviche, but it's always with Sauvignon Blanc, for example. You can have a Viognier, you can have a Pinot Grigio, or whatever, but in Chile, you will, you will cook the ceviche, and I would say 95% of the people will have it with Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah. So I thought, that has to be the logic. So if I bring a classic, a classic dish, and if I bring, for example, an, a, a, a grape variety is not that classic, I need to try to keep it with the local cuisine as much as I can. So, for example, in the case of Agiorgitico, okay. which is the main black variety in Greece with Sinomavero, meatball with tzatziki. I mean, there is no other way to drink that, for me, yeah. because it's simple. And I think that's so true, because when you have when you have a local food mm. and you have a local wine, yeah. they're sort of evolved over the centuries yeah, yeah. to be perfect yeah. together. So, so I think don't disturb that. Sense. Don't yeah. disturb that. They're trying exactly. to change There's it. There's a reason um, why. And there's something, a story very nice, uh, I think the foreword of the book, which I'm extremely happy and proud and, and I would, it will never go away, uh, was written by two very influential people in my life. I noticed this. Yes. Uh, so uh, Michel Roux Jr., I worked for him. That was my, my first job when I got here in England 11 years ago. I was very lucky to be one of his sommeliers and uh, when he was up in a restaurant in, um, in Palm Square. He's a great man. I did lots of events after that with him. And when I told him about the book, he went like, yeah, I'll write a little bit. And he was very good because it was a little bit of like a credential for me from the restaurant world to say like, look, yeah. When yeah. I told him about it and I show him the, the idea, it was like, yeah, that's good. And the other, obviously, that was a bit more like a, like a mentor. It was Stephen Spurrier which we all know it uh, if you're in the one world. He took a really long time. I was really lucky we had a meeting, we had a coffee, uh, and I opened the laptop, and this is exclusive information. I opened the laptop with him, we're having a coffee, having a tea, and he went through his staff, and he went like, and I like it. And I mean, come on, the guy's like, huge. Like, a, like huge. Legendary. Like, I'm no one, like I'm air compared to the guy, but the guy said like, I like it and I really like it, wow. and I'm going to support the project. And it was very funny because he went like, I want to see all the, the great varieties that you're going to put, I want to see all the recipes. And I said, like, okay, for more. And he went like, nice, 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 a bit funky. Oh, that's a bit too funky. That's <laughs> a bit crazy. And it's like, that's a bit crazy. And he told me, I, I really enjoy it because I thought, this is exactly what I want from a, a legend, you know, that yeah. questioned me, that challenged me to say like, so I told him, I was like, for example, he, he he never got the, the pairing with Pinot Noir. And I was like, that's crazy. It's Saganaki. It's a, it's a Greek recipe. It's fried cheese. With the cheese with the ham in it as well. Uh, no, no, with, a, with, with no the ham, ham, with sesame seeds. You can do variations, but yeah. I, I built the, the, the most basic one. And he went like, wow, Pinot Noir. I never thought about that. I said, exactly, Stephen, that's why. It's fried, it's acidic, it's great. You put honey on top. Why not with Pinot Noir? Why not? And did he try it? Not, we couldn't, we no. were supposed to, you know, to arrange a, a future meeting, but that never happened because we've got COVID, uh, and he was very, very impressed, and, and the Neviolo pairing as well, I was like, wow, I never considered that, and I said, I like it, and when he sent it to me, he wrote, it was like, here, yeah, like, yeah. the book will get hopefully old, and people will use it, but that will stay there forever, so, Absolutely. it was That's a really good person. That's incredible. When I first opened it and saw those two on the front, yeah. I thought, my goodness. Yeah, good credentials. That's yeah. incredible, yeah. 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 But they were, yeah, they were very important, so yeah, so I'm very happy with that. That's really good. You need to be really proud. It's amazing. Well, I was going to say, should we talk about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. good. Do you um, want to dive into something more practical, maybe? How, yeah. how, how the book should be uh, used? So, um, do you start with the food? Do you start with the wine? I always start with the wine. I mm. think because this is this is a, obviously a, a cookbook. Yes, but it's it's a different cookbook because you have many, 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 many chefs and non-chefs that they they write books today. Mm. You've seen, you know, from from our professions. 
but you have many wine people that write books about wine, but not many people that write a wine person that writes about food, like with a consistent system. Yeah. So essentially what I did, on the left, on the left side of the book, uh, you see the great variety and you see the background, a little bit of background mm -hmm. and very important, the styles. Then you go flavor, seller, and then you have all the key information. Why this is so important? Because, for example, this grape, Riesling, my favorite white grape variety, not many people know that it's from Germany. You would think, hmm, oh, it's from Australia. Oh, no, no, Germany. But then you go back to the main countries and then to the main regions and main appellation where you can buy the wine. So you can go like, oh, Riesling. Oh, I have the best options here to choose. I can Google it. I can check my my phone, I can be part of a wine list. And you can go like, hmm, those guys, they have Riesling, excellent, from where? Yeah. So at least you're gonna have the most famous areas and indication how it's gonna taste. When you're happy with that, you buy it through your subscription or whatever, and then you go immediately to my suggestion, which in this case is grilled trout with cucumber and apple salad. I love fish. I mean, I eat it five, six times a week. Like, no problem, I'm from Chile, come on. <laughs> We have 4,000 kilometers of coast, <laughs> All sea. you know, sea everywhere. So for me, I mean, I, I like trout because salmon is great, but trout is more delicate. Yeah. And it's kind of the same flavor. It's cheaper, smaller. You go to a supermarket, it's, it's great. And this is a German, it's typical German salad. Mm. You know, for, for my, my work, I, I'm very close to Germany. So a cucumber and apple salad is super fresh. It's quite acidic in a way. You put the dressing and then you have the apple with cucumber. It's nice. And then it says it's a lot of acidity mm. and then you have the, the fish and yeah, and it's, it's very simple, you know. What I thought was really interesting is so, um, this is why I chose this one. Mm. So we're, we're basically drinking, this is um, a Riesling mm. and it's from South of Germany nice. in Rheingau and I love the winemaker, he's so cool. Yeah, but yeah. he was basically, he worked for a really corporate company. Okay. He was traveling all over the world. It's a very big international company. Yeah, yeah. Everyone knows the name of it. <laughs> he was working all over the world, traveling around lots. He lived in Korea for five years, then fluent Korean. Wow, impressive. Decided, yeah, I know. He's uh, fully trained in kendo, martial arts. Wow. Yeah. So the whole the whole package. <laughs> he's got everything. He's got, he can do anything. That's why he's... Um, yeah, he I was going to ask you about this really nice label here. Yeah, so that's his name, Vern, Robert Vern. But he's and very it. creative, the way that he put the... Uh, Exactly, yeah. and it's really based on his Korean. But we um, we always do our tasting cards. So mm. We always have like food pairings with each one. Yeah, and when nice. I asked him, so we've got a normal food pairing and a local food pairing. Yeah. And when I asked him what he pairs with this wine, what goes really well with it, mm. his favorite dish is really similar to this. So he has a restaurant on his vineyard really? where he's retired. He retired, oh, opened a vineyard, nice. has a nice life with his family. Good just, life. I don't know it's just a hobby, really. Yeah, yeah. It's a great time, and. In his restaurant, he pairs this with grilled fish, cream and saffron sauce, and sauerkraut. And it's Not the far same, from that. Not yeah, far from that. that apple and cucumber salad. Yeah. It's got so much acidity, and sauerkraut is like yeah, full of acid, fresh acidity. Yeah. yeah, so it's that really nice combination to go with that reason. Yeah, yeah. Really, no, really again, good. again, it's it's just like it's so good to see those points getting together, and people obviously um, another classical schnitzel, yeah, yeah, which is very very famous. But I thought. Yeah, I love schnitzel. Yeah. I love it. I love it. But uh, fish always wins with me. So you exactly, know, like, uh, I put both on this one. Yeah, so because schnitzel I get is to great. Pick both. Do you yeah, only get yeah. to pick one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tiny. I, I will yeah. do definitely both actually <laughs> for lunch. Fish and schnitzel. Yeah, boom, boom. Two and, uh, yeah. Why not? I was gonna say, how does it work with this book when you want to sort of, um, you know, when you have like a dinner party, mm. you want to do mm. food and wine pairing. Yes. How does it work in terms of if you can have something as starter and main? Yeah. Does it still work? Yeah, like the book essentially is not telling you where to go. Uh, I, I kept it very free. Mm. So, so in a way, you have a lots and lots of options to do that. For example, there are going to be several dishes that naturally they're more tapa style, naturally, and you can see it. So, for example, you see the ceviche that can be yeah. served as a starter or as a main course. Do you have, for example, these green sardines with spicy sauce? You don't need that as the main course. Yeah. You can put a few and then you have maybe one or two. Just to spy things up. For example, another another really nice thing is this um, pan con tomate. Yeah. That yeah. definitely is not a main course, you know? So you have several things. But I, I didn't, you know, deliberately put this is essentially starter. 
But I, in the description, I said this can be used as yeah. a tapas, a starter. And what's really nice with that one is you've paired it with carver, which is like mm. the classic. Yeah. You sit down, you have a glass of carver, exactly. then you have some pan con tomate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would say for, for the potential readers, you will see lots of local matches. Mm. Lots. For example, this is super local, recently with grilled trout, pan con tomate with carver, the meatballs with a giorgitico. But you will have some other crazy stuff going like, hmm. I didn't think that that could work. Yeah. Uh, you know, so there's a bit of combination and, and yeah, hopefully yeah. people can discover. And the 50 wines or, or grape varieties, um, they're matched with 50 recipes, but that's only the starting point. And I encourage then the readers or users after to, to just mix. Yeah. Mix whatever they want. Because you, you can already see how much you want people to mix because you're saying the alcohol is low to medium, the body's yeah. light to full. So there's this whole range exactly. that you can almost figure it out yourself and choose. Yeah. yeah, first option, do it. Second option, whatever you want. If you cross things, if you want to start mixing uh, one recipe with white wine, <laughs> go for it. Put the rosé there, put sparkly, mix it up. This is just, I would say, 50 recommendations for you to start to work and see how you feel. Essentially, yeah. and then, and then you know, see what happens. Fifty recommendations. If you start, if you start now, I'll still be drinking wine and having nice dinners. Yeah, yeah once a week, the whole week. year, the whole I mean, year. Yeah, I might do that. That'd be really fun. No, that's yeah. amazing. Should we taste? Yeah, let, let's. So this one is, which I really like in here, is you put what you're going to be looking for. So we found it's yeah. going to be around these regions, home country nice. Germany, which is where we nice, are. Nice. We're well, Rango. Rango is there. Yeah, exactly. So you see, like, Perfect. like the same thing that the reader will do. Go, oh yeah, I got it. I got the same from the oh, same right, region. I got the right wine. <laughs> dry to sweet. Yeah, I mean, it's nice. a huge broad category. This one's very dry, and it even tells you the glass are as well and how chilled it should be. So it's like you know exactly what you should be doing yeah. with your wine to get the most out of it. Yeah. Oh, it's really petrol this one. Mm, lots of petrol, lots of stones. Mm. I like it. Clean. And if you're thinking about like cucumber and apple, it really will work so nicely with that because it's so clean. This it's one. a bit spicy as well. Fizzy, fizzy, spicy. I like the combination of. Oh, it's great. Yeah, you really can definitely... long finish. Yeah, very good. And when you have long finish on a wine, it's perfect for food pairing because the longer you can taste that, yeah, yeah. it'll mix in with it's all the flavors. It's and, and no, definitely. Yeah, I, exactly. I can see that working really well with the fish and yeah it's got enough salad. to go with the trout as well because trout's quite full yeah yeah no no definitely it's yeah. uh, 20 points straight i might go to the supermarket how many ingredients do i need <laughs> not many six look i've already got that in my cupboard i've got that in my cupboard yeah you see i only need some trout that's it yeah the trout and the rest of the stuff that's and I, I keep saying you know when, when we talk about the book i said ideally you should get all the ingredients but yeah. if you just you know, mix and match sometimes you're like, okay, watercress is, is what is suggest suggested, but can be lettuce. Yeah. I mean, no problem. You can change a bit. Yeah. As long as you put a, a green thing, you know, the cucumber, you have to <laughs> use it. <laughs> Anything green. And the apple. But maybe one day you fancy pear instead of apple. Try. Yeah. Try. And I like Why that not? creativity behind yeah. not being so focused no, on no, an exact no. recipe and exact no. pairing. There's so much to be creative. And with. also the good thing about it, for example, today we taste a Riesling, right? Mm. And we're eating, you know, this food. And maybe tomorrow you're thinking, I can go, I can do an off dry version. And maybe next week I'm going to go for off dry and medium dry. And I was like, okay. And then maybe Viognier suddenly with yeah. the same recipe, yeah. just to see. Because yeah. once you've learned that sort of, all of these go well with it. You can yeah. Okay, right. So in theory, you have 50, but you can multiply them to the infinite, you know, because you can just keep <laughs> it doing it, keep going. doing it. I've been doing this book for years. I'm <laughs> get bored with the yeah, combinations. Yeah. That's so good. Well, thank you so much. That oh, was really, really interesting. It was a pleasure. Thanks it's for the invitation. I know. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Are you, are you cooking this today? Yeah, I will be. Excellent. I only need to get trout. I've <laughs> yes. got everything else in my cupboard. I'll good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so cheers. Thank you so much. Cheers. 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 Cheers.